Hello and welcome to the United Stand. We are talking Jose Mourinho's lineup for next season. What will it be? What will the tactics be? And what will the summer signings be that take us from sixth? And I think that's the thing to talk about now. Sixth in the Premier League to challenge him for the title. Winning the Cups has been fantastic, but we, you leave that behind. All, you've always got to look ahead. How will Jose Mourinho do that? And what is his plans in relation to that? If I show you this graphic straight away, it tends to show you what well, it, what we believe a couple of the signings will be at the moment and pretty much the formation we were playing last season. So if the season was to start, I'd say, Saturday when Morata, the deal will be done and probably Perisic as well, that sort of lineup there, De Gea in goal, hopefully, Bay and Lindelof centre-backs, Luke Shaw ideally at left-back, Valencia right-back, Matic or Dyer as uh, our holding midfielder because that's the news from today so far. Herrera and Pogba midfield, uh, Mkhitaryan on the right, Perisic on the left, Morata up front. Obviously, Rashford's not there, Mata's not there, Martial's there, not there, Fellaini's not there, Rooney's not there. They, these could be bench players or they could be players who go. But that is the formation. Let me come back to beautiful me. That is the formation that we've been consistently playing last season. Now, just before you go and have a heart attack, I will flick around. I've got loads of these to show you today because I've got a theory on how United could change things and look a lot better than this. But Matic Dyer there, you'll see as the holding midfielder. That's not my choice. That's not your choice. But this is what's come out in transfer news today because whilst this is a look at how United can line up next season and the formation and tactics we should be playing, it's also worth smack in the middle of the transfer window. So we are going to be talking about transfers and the news today because that will fit in nicely. And this may well be something that we need to revisit at least a couple of times before the start of the season. But as things stand now, if we were to play the way that Mourinho has played, then that sort of team there, little bit of poetic license because I'd like to see Luke Shaw at left back. Lindelof and Bay is logical. Valencia is, lo Valencia is logical. De Gea is logical. Pogba and Herrera. I mean, that's. I want to touch on the midfield for a minute here for a couple of reasons. One, Matic and Dyer are apparently the player, are apparently the two that Jose Mourinho wants, which surprises me. But Fabinho is open to a move to Manchester United, but apparently Manchester United aren't interested in him. So think of that what you will. But if you swap, if you swap Matic for Dyer and put Fabinho in there, I'd be more happier. But the reality is, we've got to sign somebody there. So let's take that as a given for the moment. So you've got your holding midfielder, but then who's your two midfielders? Well, it's got to be Herrera and Pogba, and this got me thinking today, and I don't know what a lot of you think, when well, I'll come back to myself in a minute. I don't know what you, a lot of you think, is that if we play that midfield three, and it's Herrera and Pogba, well, I know, you know, Pogba's got to play, but Herrera, is he really good enough for us to win titles with and Champions Leagues with? in that position of a midfield three. And Herrera's fantastic and Mourinho likes him, but just let me click back again. Is that Herrera's best position in a midfield three? And also, if you think it is, I'm not saying I'm not saying it isn't, but who's our backup? From that midfield three, who is our backup? Again, last season we were very, very short in the midfield three positions. If one of those three, new signing gets injured, okay, you've got Carrick for another year, you've got Fozu Menza, but, you know, if, one, if they've got a bad injury, can Carrick and Fozu Menza do it for a whole season? Would we mean putting Herrera back there? And this, for me, is why Fellaini is definitely staying at United. I don't know why I think he's not, because our midfield is still very lightweight. Even if we sign a centre defensive midfielder, it's very lightweight as a midfield three. I, I, I don't know why we're not after two midfielders. And it really struck home to me today that it's something that everybody sort of not thought about. And I sort of not, I'm glad we're doing this show because loads of you have asked us to do it. But I think in that midfield three position, we are short. Even if we sign a centre defensive midfielder that we know we need to do, you've only got Herrera, Pogba to fill two positions. Yes, Mata can come in there, I know, and Mkhitaryan could play there, and Fozu Menza can play there, and Fellaini play there, but is that, you know, I think we need more depth in those positions. Maybe that's why Rooney thinks he's staying, although Rooney has been removed from the Facebook picture for Manchester United, so people think he's going again now, but we'll have to wait and see on that. And then your front three, Murata will obviously be the number nine. Perisic, I think, will come in for the left. And I've put Mkhitaryan on the right. It could be Mata. It could be Rashford. It could be uh, Mkhitaryan. It could be bloody Lingard, couldn't it? But that is very much, that is very much how we lined up last year. And I think the big stark 
thing for me is that, and I know KJ Godham says rather for Bino, this is not my team if you're joining late. This is not my team. This is what this is what is in the press today. Apparently, we're not interested in Fabinho. He wants Matic or Dyer. So I've just I've tried to pick the team based on what we believe the signings are going to be, have been, or will be. Um, so that would be based on the sort of formation we played last season. Um, and I tell you what, to be totally blunt with you, does that look like a Champions League winning team or a Premier League winning team? I'm not saying it can't win the Premier League, but it just feels even with Lindelof, Morata, Perisic. Pogba with a bit more freedom, Luke Shaw bombing down the left. It just feels still like there's something missing. And I think it got me thinking, it got me thinking, is this the way Mourinho wants to set us up? Because we may be putting two and two together here with the way that um, some of the signings that we've been linked to. But when I look at Manchester United last season, the big issues for me were centre defence midfield, we never had any consistency there. Centre backs, we never had any, any consistency there, but that'll be solved by signing Lindelof. Left back was a problem as well. We didn't use the width well enough. We didn't put enough crosses into the box, regardless if you've got six foot, six foot five Zlatan or well rounded all rounder Morata. They want good quality balls into the box. So I think Manchester United next season have got to sort their width out and provide proper width for everybody. One, because it gives you an outlet and everything's not going through the middle and it makes you um, a potent force down both flanks. So that's very, very important. And two, it allows us to get some crosses into the box that we'd be very, very, very poor at. I also think um, for a lot of the season we were playing Zlatan and that allowed teams to not be fearful of the ball over the top. And with Morata and a bit of pace down the flanks, we can, we, can fault, we can counter that. And also the midfield. The midfield for me in certain games got overrun. Certainly against the better teams like Manchester City, both games got overrun at Old Trafford and at um, the Empty Had. And we need to sort that out. Chelsea as well. Yeah, we did a job on them against Old, at Old Trafford, but that was very much a, um, a container job where we sort of, yeah, it was a very good one-off performance, but it reminded me very much of when Chelsea go and play Bournemouth or someone like that, where they just raise their game and get a win. That's what, I mean, I, and I was at that game at Old Trafford and it felt like that sort of performance where United just rose their game with, and it wasn't a strong team either and, and shocked Chelsea in a way and Chelsea never turned up. You can't do that every game for 38 games. You've got to, you've got to counter the opposition and I think Manchester United need to do that by making themselves stronger in the midfield. So bear with me on this one. This is how I would do it. This is th I've been thinking about this a lot. This is how I would do it. Now, apologies to David De Gea who have had to move slightly out of his goal just to show that De Gea is the goalkeeper. And this, again, is based on the players that we have at the moment. I, we have to make signings, but based on the players that we have at the moment or we expect to come in. So I would be going with, you can call it a 5-3-2, you could call it a 3-5-2, you could almost call it, call it, you can call it lots of things. You can call it a 3-4-3 if you want, but effectively it's a back three with width provided by fullbacks that when you haven't got the ball you get a lot of people behind the ball it's then got two midfielders who they're not really sitting midfielders but they are two midfielders who play either side of each other sort of box to box players you've then got a midfielder with a little bit more attacking um, license and two strikers and I think that I don't know whether Mourinho is going to go down this route, but this is, I think, what Manchester United need. And Jefferson makes a very good point about Rojo. The only reason I haven't put Rojo in there, and you're spot on, comment of the night, Jefferson, is when Rojo's fit, he comes into that team. You've got, I, I'm, I don't know about you, I'll I tell you what, I, I, for a moment, I'll just bring yourself, myself back. I am very, very excited by that lineup. I am not excited by that form, um, I am excited by that formation. No, that, I'm not excited by that formation at all. I think we we tried it last season, and its faults were we didn't get any width, and we did, and we got overrun in the midfield. And I, I I don't think it will solve a lot of the problems we had last year. But this one, I like it. I think it solves a lot of problems, and I think it provides us that natural width. Now Valencia, we know you've got no concerns with Valencia playing as that right wing back. In fact, it probably fits him better. It fits him like a glove because he's been a good right back and he's been a good right winger. Right wing back is almost perfect because it combines both roles. Perisic, from what I know about Perisic, he could play that role. Luke Shaw could play that role, but Perisic certainly can play the role because he's good at getting forward and he's hard working as well. Uh, Ranuk Dash has made a contribution. How about we sign both Fabinho and Dyer? Well, that's what I was sort of alluding to, Ranuk. I think we're quite lightweight in the midfield because when you look at it again, so the back, back, the back three there, I'm very happy with that. 
Bay, Lindelof and Blind. And as I say, when Rojo comes back, Rojo battles Blind for that left-hand side. You've also got people like um, Twan Sibi. A lot of people were a bit concerned about the signing of uh, Lindelof and whether Twan Sibi gets a chance. Well, if we play three at the back, we need a lot more centre-backs. And um, we are linked to Socrates as well. Um, Phil Jones is apparently going to stay. We can't do anything about that. Smalling probably will be sold. But you've still got Twan Sibi there. So I like the, I like the three at the back. It gives... A lot of license for that back three as well. Let me come back to myself here because I'm not expressing it. If you play that back three there with Bay, Lindelof and Blind, all three of them in their own way are very good on the ball. Lindelof's good at bringing the ball out and he's good at passing. Blind is very good at passing and Bay likes to come forward with the ball. So that back three actually, I've clicked the wrong one, that that back three actually is a very dynamic, dyna dynamic back three. And with Bay and Blind, they're both used to playing as fullbacks, and they both have played as fullbacks, so they can split across and cover Perisic if he's bomb forward or Valencia if he's bomb forward. As you move into the midfield, you've got Herrera and whoever we sign, so whether it's Matic, Dyer, or hopefully Fabino. You've got two midfielders there, and this is again, this would fit Fabino like a glove. Playing alongside Herrera, neither of them are actually centre defensive midfielders because you don't need a specialist centre defensive midfielder. They've got defensive responsibility, but also they've got they're just classic midfielders. Midfielders. They, they, they're basically two midfielders in a 4-4-2, but in the old days, like when you had Skulls and Keane, but they've got that protection of a back three, and, and they've got obviously their width, their width is provided by Perisic and Valencia, who have to be very, very, a bit like Chelsea, what they did last season. You need wide players who are very, very have got a lot of stamina. Um, Pogba would be in the more advanced position, but a lot of you have said, what about Mata? What about Mkhitaryan? Well, of course they can play that position. Pogba could drop and play where Matic is in there in that position, and you could put Mata or Mkhitaryan into that number. Well, it's not even a number 10. It's more of an attacking position. And then you've got your two strikers. Because I was thinking, and this is where I've come with this. Morata and Rashford, Morata and Belotti, Morata and Martial, Morata and Hernandez, you know, whoever it is we're going to sign this summer. How, how can we... Um, how can we form a situation where we've got two strikers? And it's very, you know, people say you can't do it anymore. Well, you can. Of course you can. Of course you can do it because you can do it that way. And people are saying you park in the bus. And and I, I didn't want to, I didn't want to, I could have changed it a lot for better because that's like when you're defending. When you've got the ball, Perisic and Valencia are all, are, all, are, are pretty much past Herrera and Matic on those flanks. They're bombing forward. Blind and Bay sort of split a little bit and Lindelof holds it together. And then you've got Matic and Herrera, Pogba. It's a very attacking position. It's a very, very attacking formation when it works and when it works well. And as I said, that formation compared to the one we played last season where it's just, oh, I don't know, I'm, 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 it's boring. It's nullified and it's very easy to contain. And I know we've, we, we are improving the personnel and getting a, you know somebody to, who can actually play on the left, who is a left winger with Perisic, a striker who put the chances away and has got a bit of pace about him in Morata. But we're still going to have the same problems of who's going to play on the right. Herrera, Pogba, and a, and a centre defensive midfielder comes in. Valencia, who's left back, Lindelof Bay. I just think that provides a hell of a lot more for the squad that we have. When you look at the wider squad, you know even if Fozu Menza can come in, in lots of positions within that squad. Um, Lingard probably doesn't get many games, so that's a positive because he can't play right wing back and I wouldn't play him in the middle. Um, Martial can come in and play up front if we sign another striker, which we need to. I think that is the future for Manchester United. Now, I don't know whether it will be, but Anthony Abderab says it's weak. I like it. Um, Edwin Castro and a lot of people are saying 4 3 1 2 is the way to go. Where's your width, though? Where's your width, width, Edwin? That's what I would say about your 4-3-1-2. Where's your width with a flat back four, a midfield three, one in behind, and a two? Because unless if, you, if your width's coming from your three, you're basically playing a midfield two, and that's not going to work. So I, I think that's the way to go, to be honest, the one that's up on the screen there. But it's all about opinion. Uh, we need a more attacking formation where you'll get a lot of attack from that position, that formation I've just thrown up there. Um, Mourinho is 4-2-3-1 always. He won't change the White Wolf. Well, we didn't play 4-2-3-1 much last season. I'll, I'll argue with you on that one, I'm afraid. That was our that was our formation last year, and that's not a 4-2-3-1. Um, it wasn't a 4-2-3-1 for a lot of the season. It was a 4-3, or you could call it a 4-5-1 if you wanted to, but we didn't play two holding midfielders at all. And we didn't play a midfield three like that. So 
you, you, I can understand how you can think it was a 4-2-3-1 last year, but it certainly, it definitely wasn't. Um, not the best of teams, says Aman Afsel. And I think that's a very good point. Um, whatever you, whatever you thoughts, thoughts are about what we're doing, I mean, the personnel is pretty much the same on both formations. Is that a team that's going to win us the title? I mean, forget Champions League. Is that a team that's going to win us the title? I think Morata will score a lot of goals. I think Perisic will be successful. Um, Mkhitaryan and Pogba, I think, will have better seasons than last year. Now they're used to it. Herrera will be his consistent self. The centre defensive midfielder comes in. Shaw, Valencia, Bay, Lindelof, De Gea. You know what? On its day, that team can beat anybody. Um, is it massively exciting? It can be. It can be. But what, when I look at it, it's a very workmanlike side, and if everything clicks, it's a very good side. But I just feel that there's something missing, and I think that the formation is part of that problem. Um, and tactically, I think we, we need to boss the midfield better, and we, we need to use the width. Um, is Morata signing confirmed? Let's bring some of the transfer news in. Vebef says, is Morata signing confirmed? I would expect it to be confirmed tomorrow. Um, Thursday at the latest. Um, he's getting married on Friday or Saturday, so... Um, I would I would pretty much well Lindelof will get revealed tomorrow we know it's going to happen but he'll get made official tomorrow and I would I'd expect Morata tomorrow or Thursday I cannot see it going any later than that because he's getting married um, Belotti I, I think I think that's gone I do, I, to be honest I think Belotti's gone for a couple of weeks he's getting married on Thursday so unless something massive is going to happen tomorrow very quickly um, he's on holiday and he's on honeymoon for a while isn't he so I don't know whether we were ever in for Bellotti if we were getting Morata anyway. Fabino seems to have died a death if you listen to everything that's been said today, which is really, really sad because I think he'd be perfect for us. And Perisic is still ticking along. Um, apparently, he's still very um, passionate about coming to Manchester United, which is good. But we'll have to wait and see. I still feel, I still feel that we need more. And I've, in prep, you know, a lot of you had asked me to do this show today, and I'll go back to that one because that's the formation we played a lot last year. And as I say, Matic and Dyer there, they're not my selections. That's what we're hearing at the moment. But I still look at that team and I think, yeah, you know what? It's a good team, but is it a Manchester United team? Is it, a, is it, a, is it, has it got enough in it? Is there enough sort of flair in it? And I think there's a lot of question marks. And I'm not saying there isn't. I like that back four for a start. Um, the midfield's not too bad. Morata is going to be the striker. Perisic is a new signing and Mkhitaryan at his best can be very good. There's a lot of potential in it, but it does just it just does feel like it's missing. Uh, I don't want to say it, but I will. It's missing a Griezmann, a Bale, even, a, you know, an Mbappe, whatever. It just feels like it is missing that superstar in the attacking positions. That Morata, as much as I like him, he isn't. It does feel like it's missing that. And that is where I'm sort of hopeful that something might happen because tonight is the last international games there's no more international games unless you're in that um the warm-up for the world cup tournament with mexico in and and, and uh, in russia the, is it the concafa cup or something like that but uh, I, it just it just feels like it is it just feels like it is chris c says there's not enough pace in that team well to be fair um perisic is quick Morata's not slow um but We'd still have, we've still got Rashford and Martial, and just because they're not in that eleven, I was just trying to mix it up a bit. But there, there are, we do have pace uh, options there. Um, do you think we need better quality than Dyer, Matic, and Herrera? Says Breach sixty nine. Well, I look at that midfield midfield three, and as I was saying at the start of the video, um, whoever comes in, and even if we get Fabinho into that centre defensive midfield position, Fabinho, Herrera, and Pogba would be a very good midfield three. But what's behind that midfield three when people get injured, when people get suspended? Um, what's behind it? And, and, and as I said at the start of the video, what is behind that, that midfield three? Michael, a, a declining Michael Carrick, a young Fozu Menza, and a very limited Marin Fellaini. That's our backup. I don't, and I think that is something that, as I say, we've, we've missed, we've taken our eye off on the ball on that one because... We need better than that. You need better than... I mean, it's all right having a very good midfield three of Herrera, Pogba and whoever we sign. But if a couple of them get injured or even one of them gets injured, you can't rely on Michael Carrick to play 20 games in a season. You can't rely on Fellaini to be... A, a, he's, he's, a, he's a fighting for top four player at best. And his foes who men's are ready. I almost feel that we need to sign another midfielder. I mean, let's not forget, if Rooney goes this summer, we've sold Schweinsteiger and Schneidlin in the last 
12 months and we've not replaced either of those yet. I think, you know, and Carrick's not the player he was a year ago. So you've almost lost two and a half midfielders and we're only going to sign one. And who's coming through? I, I think I think midfield's a real important position. And as I said, we all look at where it went wrong for us last year and it's very easy to say, well, it's basically because we didn't have a settled centre-back pairing for most of the season and we um, had we had a lot of chances that we didn't score. And I think Morata will go some way to solving that problem. But I think also, um, in the bigger games, we did get dominated in the midfield. And I think we've got, we, we need better quality in our midfield three positions. And I can't see him changing the formation that we will never not have three midfielders. So we want to see Pogba in a more ex expansive position. So... I think we need two midfielders. I, I do, I do. I know we're on about will we get two centre-backs and will we get two strikers, but I think we need two centre midfielders. Um, Nyngolan is somebody that I, I don't know whether we can do that deal. He'd be very, very good for us, but I, I more and more think that we would. King Kaiser, I knew somebody was going to say it. Play, play Daily Blind. It's like saying give it to Moisey. It's like give it to Giggsy, sorry. It, it, I don't see Daily Blind as a centre-defensive midfielder, and I'll eat my shoes if Mourinho does. Van Hal did it when he first bought Daily Blind and he very quickly stopped doing it because Blind hasn't got the mobility and hasn't got a right foot to be playing as a centre defensive midfielder. He's a good centre back and he's a decent left back. He's never going to be a centre defensive midfielder for Manchester United. He might go and do it for West Brom or Everton at a push, but he won't do it for United. And I think it always makes me laugh when people say it, not because you're wrong, because I can see why you say it, but it's not going to happen. It won't happen. Um... Pulisic is worth buying. I've mentioned him before, the Dortmund American. I really do like him. Mark, what do you make of a 3-4-3 formation? Um, well, to be honest with you, a 3-4-3 uh, formation is not massively dissimilar to that because you've got your three at the back. Pogba sort of pushes forward a little bit and then you've got your Valencia and your Perisic as your, and your Herrera and your Matic or whoever it is. As your four, so Pogba, you sort of push forward a little bit, and then you you full your wing backs push forward a bit, and it becomes a three four three. So it's not massively different to that, um, and it's not massively different to what Chelsea have done. And I, I think United should be looking at it because we need a change, um, and we need to get better service into the box. That's what we really need to do next year. And I wouldn't mind just seeing two strikers if we can find a way of playing two strikers, then I would do it. Snoop says four four two. I think four four two is dead. 4-4-2 is dead. People think 4-4-2 is still around because Leicester did it. It was never a 4-4-2. It was a 4-5-1 with uh, a support striker basically bombing it back into the midfield when they didn't have the ball. But 4-4-2 in the days of what I saw growing up in, like in 1999, where it was two up front, it was two midfielders, it was two wide men. Those days are gone because it's too easy to counter. Um, Michael Carrick said, well, you're talking about personnel saying you'd rather have Martial in there. Look, they're part of the squad. You know, they are part of the squad. William, <laughs> Liquid Hill, William Carvalho. It's a bit like Daley Blind as a centre defensive midfielder. He's a name that always comes up. Uh, Petra Giorgio says, Fabino question mark. Uh, obviously, some of you might not have seen the start of the video. The latest with Fabino is, have, have, having all of us thought that there is something in Fabino coming to Manchester United, the latest with Fabino is, is that Fabino is open to a move to Manchester United, but there is no interest from Manchester United. Eric Dyer of Spurs Dyer and uh, Matic at Chelsea are apparently Mourinho's targets. Now, just very quickly on that, Eric Dyer, I would choose out of those two, but we're gonna we're gonna pay about forty eight million for Eric Dyer. You'd get Fabino, who is better for about forty at the most. Um, as for Matic, why would we be wanting to sign a declining? Fellaini impersonating Chelsea reject. Why? I know I know Mourinho likes him, but he's 29 in August. On August the 1st, he is 29 years of age. He would probably cost us £30 million at least. Why? I don't want Chelsea rejects. Willian at a push, I would take, because I think we really need a wide man. But we're going to find somebody better. But Matic, oh God, it'd be worse than bloody Fabregas. I don't want him anywhere near Manchester United, but... If Mar you've got to back Mourinho if he does it and I do back Mourinho on his signings but I would be very uninspired by Matic yeah he can score the odd good goal but he's a very dull player to watch really dull and uh, again not a sort of player that I would expect 
to be exciting Manchester United fans, but hopefully there's nothing in it. I personally don't think there is, so I'm not being negative about it because I really don't think we're in for Matic. I can't, like I say, I can't see why we'd get Matic when we've got Fellaini. Matic is a better player, but you know, there's, there's not a hell of a lot of difference. And why, why would Manchester United want to be picking up the scraps of Chelsea? That's what I would say. Why would we want to do that? So let's go and find our own. There must be other players out there. I mean, Enzonzi's better than Matic. Get him from Sevilla. Um, where will Andres Pereira fit in that formation? Centre midfielder or in the wing, says Ranuk Dash. Well, Pereira in that formation would be looking around Pogba's position, I suppose. Um, yeah, but in that position, he can obviously play in the Mkhitaryan position. I mean, I, I personally think we'll probably end up playing like that, like we did last year. But I'd like to see us playing like that. Um, if we have this team, Mark, where will we finish in the United, you know, you know, you know, you wait for Champions League and Premier League. That's from Daryl Johnson. Um, James Rodriguez is a good shout by Sagurt. I mean, again, if I go back to that, I, I do feel that that team or that team, whatever you want, it's the same sort of personnel, really. And yeah, as I said, Martial's on part of the squad still, Matter, Rashford. So you can mix it up how you like. But even if you bring those in and take others out... I still just feel it's missing something. And whether that is a James Rodriguez or an Mbappe or a Bale or whatever, and whether we can do those deals, yeah, great. But what what really struck me when you look at that team, and obviously bear in mind you've still got Rashford, Martial, Carrick, Mata, Lingard. But when I look at that, and that is assuming we get Perisic, Morata and Lindelof and a centre defensive midfielder, so the four signings that we are told that there, only, there will only be four, when I look at that, I think, yeah, this team did finish sixth last year. Four signings isn't necessarily enough. And I don't know what you lot think, but that's, that is my thoughts. Four signings isn't necessarily enough. I think there's there's more work. Um, Agash Garang has made a contribution. Thank you, Agash. And if we get Matic and won the league, would anyone complain about his age then? Says Justin Pillai. Um, no, that's a bit of an odd question, Justin. I don't know what your point is there. I think if Manchester United won the league next year, nobody would complain about Lingard or Fellaini. Doesn't mean that they, you know, doesn't mean that they're not good. Doesn't mean that they're not open to criticism. Um, I mean, Matic is. If Mourinho signs Matic, I'll back it. We'll have to back it. But I think there's better out there. I can name ten centre defensive midfielders more exciting and better than Matic straight away without thinking. And I'd, but the big thing for me is. Whatever you think about Matic, and he's a dull player, if not effective. Uh, in fact, I came up with a good an analogy the other day, didn't I? Matic is like a roll of toilet roll. He's very good at cleaning up crap, but very boring to buy. Um, but you, you've made me lose my point now. Yeah, my, 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 my major point with this is, why, why are we... Why are we you know, and this is, where, this, is the rub, this is the rub of it. Why are we signing Chelsea's cast-off who they will sell us now because they are going to sign a very good centre defensive midfielder. I mean, the rumour is, and there's two scenarios here. So we sign, we sign Matic and Chelsea sign Verratti or uh, Bakayoko. Now, I'm not a massive fan of Bakayoko, but I'd take him over Matic. So Chelsea get a better player and we, t and we pay them money to get the player they don't want anymore. And we're Manchester United. That's my point, really. That's what frustrates me about that is... Why, why would we want Matic when Chelsea don't want him anymore, but we want to be better than Chelsea? It, it, it doesn't make any sense. So I don't think there's anything in it. And as Lynn Hall says, Nainggolan better for us than Matic is 10 times better. Um, Pogba will be back up for box to box and Mkhitaryan and Mata will cover an attacking midfield, says Neil Maxwell. Yeah, in that formation, definitely you can, drop Puck, you can put Pogba back to the Herrera or the Matic Dia position, and then you could put a, a Mikatarin or a Mata in there. There's a lot. That's why I like that formation because there's a lot of fluidity. There's a lot of fluidity. But more importantly, we're not just doing that every week where we can only play one striker. We, you know, we can play two strikers, and I think that's what we should be looking to do next year. I think it will shock a lot of teams. If I was the manager of City or Liverpool or whoever thinks they can take us on next year, I would be predicting that Mourinho will play this formation next season. I would, and that's what I'd be preparing for. If we hit the season with that formation, I think you get more out of your players that you've got. 
Um, Valencia and Perisic just basically become beasts down that left side. And, and they not only do they provide your defensive width, but they, they provide your attacking width. And then right through the middle, you've effectively got eight players that just will just take control of the midfield. And uh, we'd have two strikers as well, which would be a nightmare. I think the modern game is primed for that formation. Absolutely primed for that formation. I think everybody at the moment is sort of going through this one up front sort of thing. And I think there's a way to where you can have two up front. And I, I'd love to see Manchester United sort of being the trendsetters of that in the Premier League. Two out and out strikers. Um, but whether we'll do it or not, it's another matter, isn't it? But you've, you've got to think about it. You've got to think about it. Um, Harris Majid says Matuidi, which I like. I do. Amit Kaufman says Martial is better than Perisic. And uh, Summit says, I feel Jose will mix up formations based upon the personnel he picks up for starting level. And that's a very good point from Summit. Um, and it's something that I've missed. Yes, we should not have one formation next season. We should be able to change between lots of different formations. Because if you're going away to somebody like, I don't know, well, look what we did. At, I don't agree with what we did at Man City where we parked the bus. But if you're going to Man City next season, are you going to play two up front? No, you're probably not. You're not. Play one up front. And, and that is exactly what I'm at. You know, change the formations around. But there's lo there's, this is why bringing it back, because I think some people will say, why are you talking about formations next year when we don't know who we've got yet? It really is the point of this show. And thanks for loads of you asking us to do it. The point of this show is to look at where we are now. Look at where we finished last season. Look at what the issues were last season. Look at the predicted signings we're making and thinking, is that good enough? Can we play that formation again? Will it be good enough? What do we need to be doing now to solve those problems? Because if I went back to that formation again and I and you've got Morata up front, Perisic on the left, Lindelof centre-back and the centre-defensive midfielder, and that's the four signings we make, then we are stuck in this conversation we've had tonight about how do you get the best out of those players in those formations. If we don't get Perisic and we don't get a centre-defensive midfielder and we buy Bale or we buy Mbappe or we buy James Rodriguez or we sign Doug Douglas Costa, then suddenly things start to look very different just off not buying Perisic and buying one of those other players. And what if we do, what if we do get them for, but we also sign a Bale or a Neymar or someone like that? You know, Manchester United can do everything. And we'll tell, that, that is the one thing I'd always say about Manchester United and this channel. We can do every, anything we want to do. It doesn't mean we will do it, but we can do anything. We can win the Premier League and the Champions League next year. A lot of people don't think we will, but we can. We could sign Neymar this summer because we're Manchester United. Doesn't mean we will, but we can. And when people, not every club in the world, not in, not every club in the Engl in England can say that. And that is the that is the joy of being a Manchester United fan. We we're realists and we know that it's, it will take a big step to do a lot of those things, but we know we can do it because we we've done it in the past, and we are the big, biggest club in England, one of the biggest clubs in the world. Liverpool fans can't say that, sit there and say, we can win the league next year because we can say, back, you haven't won it in three decades. Arsenal fans can't say it either. They've not won it in a long time. Um, they can't go and say they're going to sign Neymar either. They can't. It's not going to happen. So there's not many clubs in the world that can can have that statement where Manchester United, we can do everything, anything we want to do. Anything is possible. Anything is possible at Manchester United. It should be our motto because anything is. Um Pogba's playing well tonight, says Lynn Hall. Of course, England are playing France. I've got no interest in it, really. Uh, I'll, I'll watch the highlights later, but uh, I wasn't going to stop doing a show for it. Um, but I, but as, as I said, look, I don't, I don't want people to think that tonight wasn't about a trans, uh, wasn't about transfers. I've spoken about the Rooney thing. We've spoken about Morata, which I think, I think will happen tomorrow or Thursday. Lindelof will happen tomorrow. The Fabinho doesn't, so, doesn't look like it's happening at the moment, but I'm hopeful it's just poor English press. There might be something in it, but it really did stink of um it really stunk of united have fed something to the press to be honest and that is concerning why we want matic or dyer i don't know but uh, there we go but it has brought it home to me that i think in the midfield we are short even if we sign a sense defensive midfielder you we're always going to play three in there in some way so pogba herrera new signing and then backup of fellaini carrick and um Fosu Menza is not good enough i think we need another i think we need another midfielder um, we definitely need to sort out the wings, uh, the width of the side. We've got to put quality ball into the box next season. And I think Mourinho is fully aware of that. That's why he's trying to sign Perisic. Um, and we need to get hold of the midfields better. 
The other two problems were having a consistent centre-back pairing, which I think we will have now, and somebody who can put the ball in the back of the net, which I think we'll have now. So the, the four big problems for me this season, last season, that needed to be solved this summer. Width, which we haven't solved yet, but we will. We need to have width and we need to put ball into the box. Um, midfield needs to be uh, sorted out and we need a formation that allows us to get hold of midfield because we've, we haven't in the big games. Even people at like Anderlecht have come to Old Trafford and got hold of the midfield and we need to get players in there who can do that. I think the centre defensive midfielder is very important, as is the formation. The centre-back pairing, which hopefully we have sorted with the signing of Lindelof and putting the ball in the back of the net, we started to do that by getting Morata, but I still need, think we need a striker. And if you're asking me honestly now, if I think four signings is enough, those four signings will be striker, centre-back, who we pretty much know is Morata and Lindelof, winger, probably Perisic, and centre-defensive midfielder, whoever that is. That's the four positions. For me, I don't, four's not enough. We need another striker, five. We need another midfielder, six. And I'd be tempted to say we need another wide man as well. But I don't think we'll get that. But we definitely need another midfielder and another striker. So I would say we need six signings as we are. And I wouldn't bet against it. And if you want seven, it could be the the big signing, whoever that is, um, if that's going to happen. But there's, there's, there's loads to discuss. Loads to discuss. So I hope you've enjoyed the show. If you have enjoyed it, likes are low for some reason. So please do drop a like. Um, Thanks for, I mean, the graphics by Drawty are fantastic and it's something that we want to bring in more during the summer and next season as well, flipping around between formations and, and things, which would be great to do. Uh, so do drop us a like. Uh, thanks to everyone who had asked us to do it. I know it's, we've been, we've been talking exclusively about transfers for a, for a while now and I think it's important sometimes to keep it on the transfer thing because I really enjoy that, but also start looking at the bigger picture a bit because there are football games we've got to play. There are things that we need to look at from last season that were a problem and how we how, and how we counter it this season. So drop us a like. If you're not watching live, um, get commenting below. I want to open it up to you lot now. I know the live comments have been fantastic and I really appreciate that as per usual. Superb. But um, I've got a little reveal for you in a minute. I nearly forgot as well. But um, if, you've not, if you're not watching this live, get commenting below because you might have ideas about what I really want to see in the comments is what you think about the formations we've discussed, what you think the problems were with Manchester United last, last season, if, even if you bullet point them, what you think your problems were, I've given you my four, and what you want to see us doing next, this, next season better. For me, I want to see us using the width better. As an attacking force, I want us to use the width better and I want us to, to mix things up a bit. I think we tried to go through the middle way too much last season. I want to see us using the width better. But um, thanks everyone for watching and there's your little reveal. A lot of people have asked, are you ever going to do uh, t-shirts and things like that in the United Stand? Well, it won't be that long. Let me just say that. They're coming. Thanks for watching. Speak to you all very soon. And uh, back to... Oh, I nearly forgot as well. Fixtures are out tomorrow. Fixtures are out tomorrow at 9 a.m. So rather than put the 7 a.m. transfer show up, I'm going to do a live stream. It will probably go. We'll go live at 9 a.m. and we'll co we'll combine transfer daily, which is normally at 7 a.m. We'll push it back to 9 a.m. So we'll have all the transfer news for you at 9 a.m. But we'll also tell you what the first few fixtures of the season are. So we're live at 9 a.m. tomorrow. Really looking forward to that. So join us at 9 a.m. if you can. I know some of you have work, college, whatever. If you can't watch it live half past nine just pop in the toilets or whatever whatever and watch it but there'll be no transfer daily at 7 a.m tomorrow what there might be in the interim is if something happens later tonight i'm, I'm hearing things might happen um there's a, apparently there's there's chartered flights and all sorts but i don't want to say too much at the moment because it might be to do with to do with tomorrow but thanks everyone for watching um the shirts will be coming soon somebody says can you give us another look um yeah we've got a few colors and obviously the badge looks great um that will be coming up very soon but thanks for tomorrow uh moada i think moada what i would say is if you're going to join the live comments again um you you're on your last warning mate i've read your comments so many times and enough i don't know whether your name's really adam or stephen or whoever else you're pretending to be but wind it in or you will be not commenting anymore okay that's what i'm going to say but apart from that, everybody else, absolutely fantastic. If your opinion's different, great. Get comments in below and give us your thoughts. That's just my thoughts tonight. Um, thanks for watching. Speak to you all tomorrow.